All right, now we have reached chapter 20, the last chapter before the epilogue. Let's do this. Chapter 20. The party filed out and the night turned to day. Claudette, who stayed behind to console her daughter, ascended the spiral staircase up to Johnny and Lisa's bedroom. Lisa was sitting on the couch and Johnny was locked inside the bathroom like a 13-year-old. I cleaned up the kitchen, sweetheart, Claudette said, so you don't have to worry about that. Lisa stood up. He still won't come out of the bathroom. Sweetheart, he's upset. Now Johnny is a sensible man. He will come out. You will discuss this. Everything is going to be okay. Claudette had had multiple marriages, so she knew how these sort of adultery with your husband best friends scenarios turned out. I just think I should be alone with him right now, Lisa said, concerned for Johnny even though she doesn't love him anymore. I understand, sweetheart. I'm going to go home now. Claudette kissed her daughter and poked her on the nose. Bye-bye. You call me if you need me. I will. Thanks, Mom. Mm-hmm. Claudette said, and with that, was gone down the spiral staircase. Lisa turned towards the bathroom door. Behind it lay a shattered, broken man. Lisa approached the door and tried the knob. No use. Still locked. She slammed her open palm against the wood and marched off to the center of the room where she stood with her arms folded. You can come out now, Johnny. She's gone. In a few minutes, bitch, came Johnny's reply through the door. Who are you calling a bitch? Lisa asked. You and your stupid mother. Lisa scowled and turned towards the phone, grabbed it and dialed. After a few rings, a familiar voice came on the line. Hello? Hi, Mark. I need to talk to you. Johnny was confused. What could she possibly have to talk to him about? What's going on? Don't worry about Johnny. He's being a big baby. You know I love you very much. Johnny held his ear against the bathroom door, straining to hear his future wife. I love you. He could make out he could make out Lisa say. Why don't you ditch this creep? I don't like him anymore, Mark said, disgust boiling in his voice. I know, he's not worth it. Why don't I come up there and be with you? Sure, baby, come on up, Mark seduced. I want your body. You got it. I'm on my way. Bye. She said just loud enough for Johnny to hear. Bye, Mark whispered. Johnny could listen idly no longer. He pursed out of the bathroom. Who were you talking to? He asked accusingly. Nobody. We'll see about that, Johnny said, walking out of the room. Lisa went about packing her things. <clears throat> a moment later, Johnny returned, and he had a tape. He shook it in his hand at Lisa, and she stopped dead in her tracks. She had a terrible feeling about what m might be on it. Had he recorded everything? Mark sat on the bed and pulled a tape player from the bedside drawer. We'll see about that, he repeated. Pop the tape in and press play. Hello, Mark's voice, came Mark's voice, exactly as it had sounded early, seconds earlier. Hi, Mark, I need to talk to you, echoed Lisa's recorded voice of moments ago. Lisa grabbed for the recorder, but Johnny pulled away. What's going on? Don't worry about Johnny, he's just being a big baby. Lisa took a last look at Johnny and then went back to sorting her clothes. Johnny let the tape play on. You know I love you very much. You're the sparkle of my life. I love you. Johnny dropped another pair of underwear into her bag, and Johnny grabbed her arm, stopping the tape. You little tramp! How could you do this to me? He screamed. I gave you seven years of my life, and you betrayed me. Let's see what else we have on this tape. Johnny reached for the playbook button. No, Lisa ordered. Stop, you little prick. I put up with you for seven years. You think you're an angel. You're just like everybody. I treat you like a princess, and you stab me in the back. I love you, and I did anything for you just to please you, and now you betrayed me. How could you love him? Johnny wailed, and he pressed play. Why don't you ditch this creep? I, I don't like him anymore, Mark said, disgust boiling in his voice over the tape. I know he's not worth it. Why don't I come up there and be with you? Lisa looked down at the tape with smug approval. Sure, baby, come on up. I want your body. You got it. And with that, Johnny exploded, throwing the recorder and smashing it against the wall. He fell back onto the bed. Everyone betrayed me. I don't have a friend in the world, he muttered to himself. I'm leaving you, Johnny. Lisa said, 
and true to her words, she was out of the room in moments. Johnny stood and walked over to the railing. Get out! Get out! Get out of my life! He screamed after her, and then he growled and fell back on the bed. But trails surged through every bone in Johnny's muscular body. He stampeded down the spiral staircase stairs, each step compounding his anger. He fell hard on the couch. Ah! He cried out, Why, Lisa? Why? 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 Like a hailstorm, memory struck him. Mark, one after another after another, getting drunk with Lisa, his tie tied around her head. He screamed, dancing with her in the dark, her sweet kiss. He screamed again, tears cut their way across his cheek, making love to her in those red petals and the way she looked in that red dress. You bitch! Johnny stood, throwing the fruit out of the bowls, kicking over the lamp, boxes, destroying all the glass and candles and painting on its mantle. With all the might his anger would grant him, he picked up the television and with one swift blow threw it out the window. You bitch! He spat out. You bitch! It smashed against the pavement. Screw the whole world! He brought his carnage up the stairs, destroying Lisa's keepsakes on her dresser and then destroying the dresser itself, pulling out each elf individually and sprawling its contents across the floor. Then he pushed the whole thing over. He grabbed the comforter off the bed, the pillows, the sheets, and he smashed them all over the floor into in a heap before throwing himself on the bare mattress. He flashed to him and Lisa, making love there. He stood up once more, knocking over a vase and a candle ornament. He saw his reflection in the mirror and couldn't stand to look upon himself. He threw a rock at it, and the reflection shattered, broken as he himself was. Finally, Johnny collapsed, collapsed on the floor. Amongst the sheets, something caught his eye. Lisa's red dress, the one he had bought her all those weeks ago. He felt it, let it fall through his fingers and his mind's eye, and in his mind's eye he could see her once again, twirling it in all her, in it, in all her beauty. He took it to his nose and breathed in, her scent still stuck to it. It aroused Johnny, so he shoved the dress into his crotch and thrust each pelvic spasm a reminder of the beautiful love they once shared. She was his future wife no more. You tramp, he spoke through moans. He tore at the dress, ripping it to shreds, each shred a reminder now, not of her beauty, but of her deceit. He saw her dancing with Mark, and he tore the piece of the dress. I put, I put up with you, her voice echoed in his mind, and he tore another piece. He discarded the dress and cried out. He reached for a box, opened it, and held its contents. Cold, hard, steel. Why? Why is this happening to me? Why? He looked at the gun in his hands. It's over. He cocked the gun. God, forgive me. Johnny shoved the barrel into his mouth. Everything will be all right. Lisa's voice echoed one last time. Good night, Johnny. And he pulled the trigger. just as awesome. All right, the epilogue is next. I will see you in that. Take it easy.